بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلي وصحبه وسلم وبارك على أجمعين اللهم ربنا أرنا الحق وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل وباطل وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أرنا حقا إقل الشيء كما أي ربنا زدنا إلما وعملنا وإخلاصا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر أولياءك في غزة وفي مشارك الأرض ومغاربة اللهم انصر عبادك في غزة وفي مشارك الأرض ومغاربة اللهم فرج عنا وعن عبادك في غزة وفي مشارك الأرض ومغاربة وصلي وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفينا محمد وعلي وصحبه وزواجه وزواجه ويترته وعوانه وانساره وإخوانه تجبه برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمن آمين we are continuing with our reading of Can China Save Capitalism? And basically, had stopped here the essence of state rule. But let's go back a bit so to keep the continuity. So, from here, economic liberalization has been a state project uh, in China since 1970. Uh, that was in Bismarck's Germany. The governing role of the Communist Party and the State Council remains crucial in the whole process. The form of state governance has been restructured to foster bourgeois uh, dominance of the social order, and some would say also of the state form. The state has not shrunk in the process. Quite contrary, it has fallen, and the complexity of state social intervention has increased enormously. So the role of the state remains central uh, despite the fact that the form of the state and its purpose and social uh, base has changed um, the essence of this status quo is the structuring of a new relationship between central and local government the central government remains firmly in command uh, and market and society liberalization occurs not spontaneously, but in response to the promulgation, promulgation, promulgation of new laws by the states. And that is the central state. The so central state initiates um, reform. Um, the central government remains firmly in command and marking and as uh, so society liberalization occurs not spontaneously but in response to the promulgation of new laws by the state um and that has that had been the case with a lot of uh, early capitalist states yeah, in early phases of the development of capitalism state uh, provides uh, or plays active role like it did in China and I mean sorry Japan and Germany at the end of the 19th century this has been accompanied this has been accompanied by a down downward shifting of state power autonomy of the local especially city governments have been expanded significantly faction this this seems to be a um, the type of factionalization of party seems to have increased in response to the struggles for preserving or enhancing autonomy of different tiers of local governments. Uh, factionalization of communist party. Okay. Okay, so uh, note number 23 says that expansion of power in metropolitan cities to an ex neighborhood, a smaller city seems to be particularly contentious. Big city factions seem to have acquired particular strength within party. Oh, 2002. Local government authorities in different tiers, city, provincial, and country are China's principal overseers of development. They have been, they have been given specific powers, including seizures of land and sanction, sanctioning of infrastructure facilities sanctioning of infrastructures facilities to foster growth enhancing partnerships state and party officials at the local level are encouraged to play an entrepreneurial role so it's a capitalist a state is becoming a different level a state is becoming capitalist in a specific sense yeah. 
the the key they have stakes in private businesses and businesses and serve as managerial directors of state enterprises they who are the party officials yeah party uh, cadres are assessed for promotion within the party on the basis of their effective participation in development developmental projects okay so the party and the state different levels of skill they play the role of um business venture capitalists for them. so there's an intra and into competition between the set of different states and party level so party cadres um, are assessed for promotion within the party on the basis of the effective participation in developmental projects so that's an intra party uh, competition as well local governments also enjoy an enhanced level of fiscal autonomy their revenue depends uh, by fiscal autonomy vis-a-vis Uh, fiscal autonomy granted by the state, central state, but it's not the autonomy. Uh, the expense of uh, state government, I think, central government. So they're autonomous, so, but they are not so subservient to um, foreign capital, for example. Local governments also enjoy an enhanced level of fiscal autonomy. Their revenue depends more on, more on local rents and taxes, local government, than on central government's uh, subventions. So they raise their own money rather than getting money from the central government. China is now one of the most decentralized states in the world in a fiscal sense. A vital source of uh, local revenue is businesses, taxes and profits and sales of state firms. The local state and party have become agents of particular capitals. That is the local capital, local level capitals. This is also at last party, uh, sorry, this is also at last partly true of the central government and party Sorry, this is also at last partly true of the central government and party apparatus. Central government party officials protect and benefit from protecting particular capitalist interests as against, like, you know, particular. Particular is a relative term, obviously. So, can be a particular business, or particular, particular can be a. Central state level business or state level business or local business, etc. Since 2000, private businesses have been admitted into the party and they are now set to constitute the majority of the national leadership. Private businessmen. So instead of um, professional revol revolutionaries, you have now. Business businessmen running communist party, so that's natural because at the end of the day, uh, communism is a form of capitalism. But like it's Bismarck in Germany and Meiji Japan, uh, but like in Bismarck in Germany and Meiji Japan, the ultimate legitimacy of the central state and party derived from its ability to ensure capitalist development in China as a whole. So building China infrastructure, etc., and providing jobs, not just that one hundred particular regional and corporate capitals. The central state and party remains committed to a widespread widespread diffusion of the benefits of the capitalist development throughout China and periodically launch campaigns campaigns against corruption to address the most rampant 
most rampant injustices. Okay, so the role of party is important, central, and there's a decentralization at the fiscal level, and they all compete with each other in order to advance capitalism in China, not necessarily private capital, but state level capital or enterprise level capital, but party is also inf infiltrated or it has made way for businessmen, etc. But this is linked to uh, uh, you know, overall capitalist development and progress, etc. Okay, so I, th I think we should stop here and then we next time we'll look at can China bear white, ma white man's burden? Subhanakallah, we are